Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at D2S with Aki Fujimura. We're going to talk today about the changes that are happening on the EDA side in order to take advantage of curvilinear shapes in the mask shop. Aki, we've been hearing about curvilinear shapes for a long time and printing on the masks. What happens on the data side within the manufacturing area? What has, what's changing? How's, how's that going to affect things? Yeah, so um, in order to accommodate curvilinear shapes for everyday use, and curvilinear shapes are possible for like very limited use, right? But to, for everyday use, which is what everybody wants to do, um, uh, some of the data path has had to change. Um, and uh, one of the examples would be uh, MRC, or mask rule checking, which is similar to design rule checking on the design side. On the mask rule check, um, after you design the mask shapes, then you want to make sure that it's manufacturable, that it's not violating any of the rules set forth by the mask shop. Um, and uh, uh, it used to be uh, that uh, many of these shapes were very, very complex, uh, that they, these rules were very, very complex, saying, uh, uh, you know, we know that this 90 degree corner is really not manufacturable, uh, so it's okay that you don't make a 90 degree corner on the mask, but you need to be within this far, you know. And if you have many Manhattan corners right next to each other, then, uh, well, then it's actually okay that it forms a diagonal effectively, or, you know, there are many complicated design rules in, in, in the mask rule checking process. And so uh, it turns out that mask rule checking can be made much simpler in the curvilinear world. So this is an example um, of rolling a ball inside to do minimum space, minimum width, and also uh, maximum curvature check. Um, so you, ball, you roll a wall inside, and as soon as it intersects a, uh, an edge like that, then that's a violation because the curvature here just isn't enough. Or you can take a, roll, a wall, maybe of a different size, and roll it outside, and if it hits something, then that's a, a, a minimum spacing violation, and so on. So um, this is just an illustration. This is not how the cat algorithm works, but uh, this is an intuitive uh, illustration of what can be done differently in the curvilinear world, and in fact, makes things a lot simpler. There's been a lot more rules developed as we start getting down to each new new process node too, right? So it becomes much harder to, to get that exact spacing and, and fit those corners in correctly. Yeah, spacing and, uh, you know, the, they're getting tighter and tighter. Um, it gets more and more difficult to have these special rules for unmanufacturable 90 degree corners, right? And so the benefit of this approach is simplifying to represent things that can actually be manufactured because manufacturable shapes are more reliably manufacturable. What does this look like in manufacturing in the real world? Uh, another example um, of curvilinear shape processing on the manufacturing side that can serve as a great example for the design side um, is that we do a very, very sophisticated manipulation of all curvilinear, all Manhattan shapes for mask making in real time as the mask writer is writing the, the mask. Um, that this is possible, that you can do very sophisticated pixel-based manipulation on the mask manufacturing process is proof that it's possible to deal with curvilinear shapes and not have the complexity of the algorithm explode, right? And the trick is GPU acceleration with pixel-based computing. In essence, then, you had to wait for the technology to catch up in terms of the multi-beam capabilities in order to make this work on the manufacturing side, right? That's correct, um, and uh, it's an interesting thing. Um, multi-beam machines work with gray levels of arrays of pixels. At the same time, GPUs became available and cheap enough that also work in grayscale arrays of pixels. So exactly the same math works on both the computing side on the GPU, pixel-based computing on the GPU, 
as it does in a physical world of projecting e-beam with arrays of doses. So the same technology or same math works in the two different planes, and that's what makes this whole thing work. Or looked at differently, you needed to create the GPUs with this technology in order to be able to use this technology. Well, the, the, that GPUs are paced along Moore's law, and the next generation GPU is using the last, you know, second to last uh, uh, a GPU uh, to design and to manufacture. That's uh, kind of an interesting thing. What impact do you see this having on the market, not only for manufacturing, which is already using this, but also on the design side? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a great point. Uh, that, uh, now that curvilinear masks are fact in manufacturing, there's nothing stopping curvilinear design, right? Curvilinear manufacturing on a mask happens because for manufacturing sake alone, without thinking about design benefits, for manufacturing sake alone, for wafer process window improvement, you want it, right? Manufacturing wants it for itself, for its own objectives, right? But the exact same action is what enables curvilinear design. So that's the interesting next topic. Aki Fujimura, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.